now. Here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Like Us 101. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. I mean, a girl decides how far she's going to let you go in the first five minutes. You in my class? I am today. All right, I got an idea. But it's got to stay between us. It's really simple. We just got to make an agreement. Here's the deal. We all get laid before we graduate. It's not like I haven't been trying to get laid. Think about when you work out, Oz. You got to have someone there, right? Someone to spot you. Someone to keep you motivated. Well, that's exactly what we can do for each other. I mean, we'll, we'll be there to keep each other on track. Separately, we are flawed and vulnerable, but together we are the masters of our sexual destiny. I mean, this is our very manhood at stake. We must make a stand here and now. No longer will our penises remain flaccid and unused. We will fight for every man out there who isn't getting laid and should be. This is our day. This is our time. And by God, we will not stand by and watch history condemn us into celibacy. Amen. I like that. Yes. We will make a stand. We will succeed. About time! We will get laid! It's like his 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Classes in session. This is where we teach the tenets of like 101. Now, if you are here in this summer class, it's because, clearly, many of you have not been following the rules. Many of you have failed at like 101. Many of you uh, have ignored the tenets and have paid the price, and you are here now trying to brush up. So let's brush up. Like us 101, first of all, is not a course to tell you how to fix a relationship or a marriage. We're not in that business. That's not what we do. Your professor does not believe that men should be married and does not believe that men need actual live-in relationships. So if you're looking for help with that, call a turkey neck uh, on AM radio or, you know, call some advice to the lovelorn person or something like that. Don't call me. That's not the business I'm in. My job is getting you laid. My job is getting you laid with a minimum amount of energy spent, money spent, time wasted. My job is to keep you away from the women who don't give you what you came for in the first place. Sex. The purpose of dating is not to uh, not to join the declining lines at Starbucks there and uh, not to drink the new chai that's coming out or the new fruit drink or whatever it is they have coming out there. Uh, the purpose of dating is not to go to, uh, to see the new movie that's coming out. The purpose of dating is not so you can discuss who you think is going to win the election this fall. It's not to have an intellectual conversation. It's not to talk about world events. It's not to go shopping at the mall and seeing what shoes look cute. The purpose of dating is not to see what kind of flowers you can find or cards you can find. It's not to shop for champagne or chocolates. The purpose of dating, men, is to get laid. That's the purpose of it. If you have a date scheduled for this weekend, and the purpose of it is not to get laid, I want you to get on the phone right now before I finish this sentence. And cancel the date right now. Cancel it. Know what you're going out to do. You're going out to try to convince somebody. 
to have sex with you. That's what you're doing. I, I'm amazed at the number of guys who have been convinced that dating is something else. Whatever happened to dating and getting laid? When you go on a date, you do not invite her best friend along or her best three friends. Her girlfriend who just broke up with her boyfriend. No, that's not a date, okay? That's you spending money on her friend to make her friend feel better. How many of you have gotten suckered into that? Right? Her best friend, the woman you want to go on the date with, her best friend just broke up with her boyfriend or her husband or whatever and needs to be cheered up, which means that she needs to come on the date with you. So you can buy her dinner or drinks or you can go out and dance with this poor bitch. And, and, and meantime, your purpose gets lost in the sauce. Anytime a woman wants to take another person along on the date, cancel your participation in the date. Use any reason necessary. A date is two people, okay? You know how they keep trying to define marriage as, uh, you know, a, a union between a man and a woman? A date is an evening with two parties. Not three, not four, not five. You don't buy meals for her family, not her mother, not her sisters, not her cousins who are in town from out of town. No. Where do you guys get these ideas from? No. No. You don't buy drinks for her friends. You don't go to bars where her friends hang out, where you will just happen to run into them. And then she can run off to the ladies' room and gossip about you with her friends uh, in tow while you're there saying, How many people wanted a gin and tonic? How many wanted a Long Island iced tea? You don't do that. You meet her, you want to spend the least amount of time possible getting her soused, and then getting her back to the sack. Now, if you're a weed smoker or you engage in some other kind of chemical inducement, whatever it is, the idea is you don't want to spend a lot of time talking. The more you talk, the more likely it is you're going to say something that she is going to use as an excuse to not have sex with you. You don't want to talk about politics. You don't want to talk about your religion. You don't want to talk about your opinion about abortion. You don't want to talk about anything. You just let her blah, 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 blah. Let her go on and on and on. Reveal nothing. Tell her nothing. Do not open up. Do not tell her what your innermost thoughts and feelings are. You're just trying to get laid, for Christ's sake. The more you tell, the more vulnerable you are to being rejected. Don't let it happen. Keep the talking on your part to a minimum. Let her talk. Let her put her foot in it. You don't. You don't. Do you hear what I'm telling you? You don't. Can't make it any simpler than that. Your job is to keep things simple. Get the booze into her gut. Hail a cab or whatever you have to do. Get out of there. Get her between the sheets. Keep her to her place. Try not to take her back to your place if you could avoid it. You want to go to her place. And that way you can control when you're going to leave. You do not want to stay over. There's no sleeping over. No hugging. No spooning. No caressing. No kissing. Uh, none of that. It's like when you take the SUV in and you fill it up with uh, unleaded. <laughs> then, uh, you know, you get your receipt from the machine and you go. <laughs> you don't, after you, by the way, after you fill your car up with gas, do you hang out at the gas station? Do you have brunch with the gas pump the next day? No. You fill her up <laughs> and then you step on the gas and you're done. Think of a woman like a Chevron station, Okay. There you are. You're one of those cute little cars that goes in there because you're like Tecron, okay? You go in, you gas her up, and then you get the hell out of there. 
<laughs> you don't. You don't go hang out. You don't have breakfast with it. Right? You don't have brunch with it. You don't say, hey, tomorrow, Mr. Gas Pump, why don't we go see a movie? You know, you just do your business and get out of there. Can you see it that way? This is it. High tail it out of that gas station. Just get the hell out of there. Get back on the freeway. And head to the next service area. Take service area 30 miles. There you go. That's how you do it. Can, can, can you understand that? That is what it's all about. My job is to save you time, money, and energy. My job is to keep you from getting into relationships, keep you from getting into commitments, keep you from getting married. That's my job as your professor. We, of course, we believe in the three strikes you're out rule. Any woman who doesn't put out in the first three dates, you kick her to the curb. No more than $40 spent on a date. Zero is optimum. 40 is a maximum, by the way. You don't have to spend $40. Just don't spend more than $40. And we don't date single mothers who we want to be paying for their next little mistake. No, we don't. We've already had one. Why would we want them to have another one? Am I right? Okay. So that is all you have to do. It's not that complicated. You may have questions. You can call me here at 1-800-5800-TOM. Uh, there are many women who have uh, problems or issues with Like Us 101. And we certainly welcome you to call in. We like a good, vigorous classroom discussion. If you're angry, tell your professor why. And by the way, if you're calling from another country, we have an international phone line where you can dial in and uh, who knows? Maybe we can spread like us 101, spread the gospel around the world. We've already heard from people from places like Egypt, Iraq, Japan. Uh, we've heard from people in uh, Panama. You just call this number if you're calling from another country. The country code is 1. The area code is 323. And the telephone number is 520-6211. That number is 1-323-6211. 520-6211. That works anywhere on planet Earth. So if you've got questions for your professor, now is the time to let them be known. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I am your professor. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. It's Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. It's Tom. Yes. Oh, hey, Tom. How are you doing? Great. I had a question for you. It's, um, okay, I'm, I'm 19 right now, and I have a friend. Uh, one of my big, a girlfriend, like one of my best friends, 18. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Right? Is she a girlfriend or a friend? Just a friend. Oh, why, why do you refer to her as a girlfriend? Well, she's like, she's like, no, she's one of my, like, she's a girl, like, a friend. And why, why do you, why, you know, the only females who are your friends are fat, fugly, or lesbian, okay? Yeah, right. So why do you have a, 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 a friend who you would want to have sex with? No, no, she's not my friend. She picks up girls with me. She helps me out. She'll, she, she'll go out of, she'll go out of place. And that's because she's not interested in you. What? That is because she's not interested in you. Oh, I know we're, we're it's like a system we're doing. No, no. Here's the system. She's not interested in you. And to keep you from hitting on her, she takes you out and helps you meet other girls other than her. No, no, no. That's my question. No, because recently she tried to get me in the bed with her, but I don't know if I should do it. What What? What do you care? So why don't you lose the friendship? It's all about getting laid. She, bring, she brought me like 50% of my girls that I've gotten with. Fine. So, I mean, if I go in bed with her, then I'm going to lose... And then, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna drop her right after. So you'll get a new wingman. Big deal. Like this loser? Is she hot? Is she hot? Of course she's hot. What do you see? Of yeah. course she's hot. Maybe she's not. I would I wouldn't take a girl with me to pick up girls. Everybody with says that. Excuse me. Everybody says that. She she's hot. She ain't no ten. She's like an eight. <laughs> eight so or already nine. already she's, she's not as hot as she started off being. That's true. Right. 
So, I mean, why would you worry about losing that? No big deal. That's true. I can go out the boys then, huh? What do you care? Once you get what you want, what do you care? I just don't want to lose because she's buying me a lot of girls. She has, knows a lot of girls. That's why. Then don't do it. Then don't do it? How about, I mean, I'm telling you that for me, it's all about getting as much sex with as many women as you can. Right. That's what it's all about. You know, for me, it's about, uh, if from, in my case, it's about uh, visiting every country on earth without ever leaving uh, Los Angeles. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Mm, all right, then. Well, where do you think I could pick up a lot of girls at with my, with my friends? Because we're not 21 yet. We can't go to bars. Where have you been picking them up? At the malls and, like, so? you know, like we go to, like, amusing parks. Like, Look, I've told guys there's there's uh, two ways to go. If uh, it sounds to me, you're telling me you're picking up all these chicks at the malls. But if you need even more places to go, you have the following: hotel lobbies, like where they have a lobby bar. Right. They don't check ID for you to sit in those big comfy chairs at the lobby bar at a hotel. Okay. Right. I, I never been there, but okay. Now, huh. ever been to a hotel? I've been to a hotel, but I never went to the Ever bar, noticed but... that a hotel bar has, like, a, a hotel is a lobby bar? Right, they have little benches around. But they usually have big, comfy chairs. Oh, see, I've never been in there, so I don't know what's in there. Why? I'm telling you. All right. Go to the lobby bar. You just don't sit at the bar bar. You sit in the chairs there and then wander around. You're already in. The only time they generally ask you for ID in those places is if you try to order a drink, so don't. Okay. All right. Another one is restaurants that double as bars. Examples, TGI Fridays, El Torito, anything called Bedigans, Hooligans, Hands, or any name like that. Okay. Places where they sell potato skins as dinner. All of these places have bars, and they don't check ID to get in the restaurant. All right. Do you understand? Understand. So, so the only know. time they check your ID is if you try to order a drink. Okay. So order a ginger ale. All right. So it looks like a drink. You okay. Do you understand? Understand completely. You're going to pay more for a ginger ale than you've ever paid in your life. So there's... I'm just... Okay. Order a 7-Up and say it's a gin and tonic. Who's going to know? <laughs> Okay, Tom. You understand what I'm saying? You haven't been thinking out of the box, Jason. Yeah, because I, I don't know. You I have to stop been, thinking I've in the been, box and limited. start thinking out of the box. What? I've been living. That's why I've been only going to, like, places with, like, people from my age. I haven't been going, like, restaurants, bars, nothing like that. Cause I don't want them to throw me out. But as I told you, have you ever eaten at El Torito? No, I haven't been there yet. Ever eaten at TGI Friday? Just save me the time of going through the whole list. Have yeah, you ever I've been, eaten? I've been TGI Friday. All right, been to Romano's Macaroni Grill or places like that? Yeah, I've been there. All right. Have they ever asked you for ID? No. Black Angus? No, Outback? They don't ask you for ID. Right? Right. Even though I ordered a drink one time, they didn't ask me for my ID. Well, all right, that's a whole other question. All right, the point I'm making to you is many women go to the bars in these places. Uh, the, uh, the, one of the hints I've been giving out lately is TGI Fridays. This is where, you know, let's face it, receptions are generally picked because they're hot. Where do receptions go after work? Well, they don't make a lot of money. If they want to sit down and have dinner, many of them are you know, not going to go to a room. First of all, they don't cook. And many of them cannot afford to go to a regular restaurant and eat. So what they'll do is they'll go to the bar, TGI Fridays, order potato skins and a Long Island iced tea. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Or I a daiquiri. See. So TGI Fridays is a particularly good place to pick up hot chicks with low incomes. Okay. How do I know? That's mostly what I date. What you date? Hot chicks with low incomes. All right, let me ask you one more question. When you go out to these bars and start picking up girls, do you go solo or do you go with, like, a team? 
go no, with, no. Like, I go solo. I work it solo. And and the reason I work it solo is because I go to the bar, and then I play, uh, uh, you know, like I've got better things to do than talk to anyone at the bar. I go to the bar, I sit down, I order a drink, and sometimes I'll chit-chat with the bartender. Okay. Eventually, women come up to me, and I let them know that I'm there waiting for a friend to show up, or a bunch of friends, or whatever. Women are attention whores, and they can't stand it if you're sitting near a bar and not pouring attention over them like maple syrup. So eventually, if you're not saying anything to them, they will come to you. Okay. All right, Tom. Can you take me out Kobe style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Your beats in my heart. Oh. Your air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is the telephone number. It's Likus one hundred one. I am Professor Tom Likus. This is Sandy on the Tom Likus Show. Hello. Hi Tom. Hi Sandy. How are you? Great. Good. I have a couple of. I have a question and I have a comment about your topic for today. First off, I'd like to know what your mother did to you to make you such a woman hater. I don't hate women. Oh, you don't. No. Oh, okay. No, I mean, uh, my God, women make the best sperm depositories. Uh, they're, they're the best. And you use God in that sentence, but yet you're down on relationship, which is a God-given instinct. No, it's really not. Yeah. <laughs> well, then how do you explain all the gay relationships? Well, I, I don't explain gay relationships. Well, I, the, I guess, narrow. does that instinct come from God, too? I think that's biological, actually. So, you're one yeah. of the uh, Christians who believes that God uh, wants gay people to have relationships. So, back to your mother. What did she do to you to make you so Well, again, you, you were asking a question that's based on a fallacy. Uh, my mother did nothing to me, and I don't hate women. But would you want a man to treat your mother this way? Would I want the a man to treat my mother? Well, put it this way. If my mother wasn't my mother, if she was single... And guys wanted to get laid, uh, that would be the most effective way to get what they wanted. <laughs> oh, so you really, you wouldn't care if a man worked your one-on-one program. Well, it, my, it, a man couldn't do that because my mother was married to my father for 40 years until my father died. Right. So you you based your information on your three failed marriages. This is, uh, darling, uh, as as an aging woman who has passed her prime, it's probably hard for you to understand the difference between getting married and getting laid. Uh, the fact is, any man who's been married knows the difference. Uh, but right. uh, this has nothing to do with being married. Okay, and then... Uh, do you understand Do you understand that? I want to make sure you understand oh, that. I, what oh, we're talking about has nothing to do with marriage. This is about getting laid. I understand. There's a, be, having failed marriages or getting divorced or call it what you will has nothing to do with getting laid. Okay. I was getting laid before I ever got married. Yes, and if anybody, well, anyway. And after each divorce, I got laid more. But your comment yesterday on names that you would not, it would turn you off, you would not go to bed with if they had a certain yeah. name. Sandy would be one. Well, no, mine would be Tom, Dick, and Harry, Tom being the first name, because you're just a uh, And I'm not going to let you get to the second one there, dear, because we know where that one's going. As the rooster said, cock a doodle dip. One eight hundred five eight hundred top a dried up old prune. <laughs> Seriously, get down between thigh number one and thigh number two, and it's going to be like, oh my god, look how big this is! Unbelievable! I don't think anyone's been in here in a while. Look, ooh, there's a bat flying out of here. Whoa, look out! Heads down. A bitter old broad, nothing better to do than call a radio program and try to be an armchair psychiatrist. So, uh, lady, if you had a husband or a, or a boyfriend who was uh, knocking it out with you, you wouldn't have time to call radio programs and be a bitch. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Michael is listening to our online stream in Baltimore on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay, Michael. First time uh, getting on show. I've been listening to the show for about the last uh, eight months. 
Um, I had uh, one question uh, in reference to um, your tenants. Yes. I, I wanted to know, how do you go about developing a bullpen, and then what is the ideal number? Well, first of all, a bullpen, the purpose of a bullpen is so that you never have to put up with the lame excuses women give you for not giving you what you need. Okay. So when a woman is on her period, or when she has a headache, or when she's tired, or when she has to go to work early tomorrow, so what are you supposed to do, sit home twiddling your thumbs? Right. No. You do what happens when the starting pitcher gets knocked out. You make a call to the bullpen. Right. You bring in your middle reliever. You bring in your long reliever. Okay. You bring in your setup man. You bring in your closer. Okay. That's what you do. All right. And the, the, the bullpen, just like in baseball, each pitcher has a specific uh, responsibility or a specific uh, part of the game that they pitch. Uh, you're going to have women in your bullpen who clean up well and look good at company events that you can take to the company Christmas party. Women you could never take home to your mother. You just bang them and don't let anyone see that. Uh, women who, um, you know, 10 years from now, if you can still stand to look at them, maybe at some point in time you'd consider a relationship with them. Uh, women who uh, are like men who just like to bang one out once in a while. Uh, booty calls. Uh, and that way, uh, anytime a woman says no for any reason, you just go to the next name in the bullpen. Okay, okay. Never, ever get so tied up in a relationship that a woman can tell you, I don't feel good tonight. Maybe we can see each other next week sometime. And you sit there waiting for next week to come along. Right, right. Okay, I see what you're saying. Um, you can mix up the rotation as well, right? Oh, yes. Right. You can uh, mix up the rotation. You can. You can have a fifth starter if you need to. Yeah, I have a pitch count. I'm trying to work on a, a yeah. couple of women. So we're trying to say, yeah, you, you have so many pitches, and if it doesn't work... Uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna bench you. So that's exactly right. And I have had women I've sent down to AAA. Okay. Well, women who've been moved out of the rotation. Right. Uh, I've had women I've traded for other women. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I appreciate uh, that that information. Can you take me out African style? African tribal style. I can indeed. <laughs> Tom like it. Who's laughing to it? 1-800-5800-TOM. TOM. TOM. 1-800-5800-866. From Hollywood. I'm Tom Likas, your professor for Likas 101 at 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Marie. Hello. Hello. Who am I speaking to, Tom? Who do you think Hi. you're speaking to? Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Um, I just wanted to make a couple of comments to you. Um, I do appreciate it when you're warning these young boys to stay away from these girls and focus on their education. I greatly appreciate that, and I love it when my son and his friends are listening to that. Um, but why are you so angry and bitter against all women? Well, uh, the last caller said this, and I said I'm not angry or bitter. Well, sometimes, you know, you know, is it really safe for you to tell men to sleep around and go from one woman to another? I mean, they're doing always... it already. They, they're they not getting that idea from me, darling. I understand, but, you know, can't you, like, not support something like that and tell the boy? How can I not support it? I do it myself. Yeah, well, you do it yourself, but you're probably wiser than these young boys. I mean, some of these young boys don't even use condoms, and you know I that. tell them to use condoms. That's all I can do. I know you do. I know you try your best, but at the same time, your your show is fine. To a point. But That's great. Try, you know, but not all the women are money hungry, and not all women. No, are they're. Not. I never said they are because many women are fat and fugly, and uh, they'll never get a man to pay their bills or give them any money. So obviously, I would never say that all women are gold diggers. They're not. They they couldn't possibly be. Yeah, I mean, and but I never said they are. And you know, most women only the kind of women you'd want to sleep with. Yeah, I agree with that. There's a lot of those in the bars. That's why we tell men don't go to bars to find a wife. Right? No, well, we don't. I tell men don't go looking for a wife. That's what I tell them. Yeah, but you know, I'd rather you say just don't go to these bars looking for women. No, Seriously. you go to a bar to look to, to get laid. That that's where you go with the. Uh, my God, you have to go where the uh, you, you go hunting where the bears are yeah. or the cougars. Yeah, turn I the radio. Uh, turn the radio off. We can't be listening to the radio. Stop it. You know, my, you know, my daughter turned. Tell it your off. daughter to turn it off. Right. 
Turn it off. Okay, but I do appreciate the way you're you talking. said that already. Thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tell you know what? When you run out of material, just say thank you, Tom, and and hang up. Don't start repeating the whole thing all over again, please. Danny on the Tom Likas show with your professor, Likas one hundred and one. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Danny. <laughs> What's going on, my man? Doing okay. Just doing a radio show. <laughs> I've been listening to you for a long time, many years, and uh, I would call you my dad, except I've got a great, 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 great pops, so you might be dad number two. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Well, yeah, and I do have to thank you, because I had no, 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 no game, you know, before I listened to the professor. Right. And you helped quite a bit. You know, it was it's it's been great. So I have a situation that I could use your assistance and advice with. Okay. Okay. So I'm I'm a musician. I'm a salsa musician. I met this this uh, woman at a gig two weeks ago, and um, really attractive girl, real good dancer, beautiful dancer, and um, we're going out now, like third date or fourth date or something. Fourth date. May what did I, I tell you about fourth date? I don't remember. I think it was three. After three, you're done. Yeah, I know this. I know this. Well, well if you I know it, the question, sir. Well, if you know this, you there would be no question. That's true. That's true. I might be. I might not be the, as strict as humanly possible on all the rules. Well, you'll you'll I mean, find out why you I mean, should have been. I'm, and I have a feeling that's going to be relating to this question. Go ahead. All right, let's go. So. Last night, um, I hit it, you know. You hit it? All, I hit it. Last night? Yes. On day well, number four. he didn't four. ask me that question. But afterwards, you know, she's like, you know, I'm not so, you know, she has a heavy accent. She's from Mexico. Um, you know, I'm not so experienced like you, and I don't know if you believe me, but she says she's a virgin. She says she's a virgin. All right, let's, yeah, let's, look, let's look for clues. Let's look for clues. Number one. Yes. Were your sheets sopping wet? I'm, I'm sorry? When you were done, did you need to use a lot of spray and wash? Oh, was she? You! You had sex oh, with her. Oh, no. Uh, virgins are bleeders. Now, there are mm, some no, who don't. Definitely not. All right. Yeah. So, my guess, yes. knowing her background... Mm -hmm. is that she wants you to believe she is a virgin because it's very, very bad to be a loose woman. So she's hoping you'll believe that. Mm, yeah, see, I thought that you were a great person to ask this question, not only because you're, you know, the professor, of course, but because you you frequently date Latin women. And, you know, she said she grew up Catholic, and her mom, she lived with her mom, and, you know, so that's how she didn't get out and never, you know, did it. But but then how did she manage to have sex the first time without bleeding? Okay, so that's a good point, sir. Very good point. Now, I, I, I would love to share a story with you of an exploit of mine. <laughs> All Would you right. like to hear it? Sure. Okay, okay. By okay. the way, how was she in the sack? Did she know what she was doing? You know, um, that's a good question. It was like, you know, she kind of didn't know the positions really, but she wasn't uncomfortable about it. So, yeah, well, she probably has more I mean? experience than she's letting on. Yes, I would I would think you're right. Yes. Okay. Anywho, anywho. So, um, my... But that's not what you called about. I'm sorry? Go ahead. No, I know there's something else. Well, you know, my story isn't going to be really that interesting, I'm realizing. <laughs> okay, good. 1-800-5800-TOM. The top boy just waiting for it to come was not that interesting. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Like Us 101. I am your professor. Here's Mitch on the Tom Like Us show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, Mitch. Uh, hey, I got a friend who is basically getting railroaded by a girl that is not, he's not her boyfriend. They're not boyfriend and girlfriend. She'll basically only call to hang out when she needs money. He's bailed her out of jail before she never pays him back. She's got a boyfriend, just had a kid. He's giving her money. And I listen to you. That's total BS. So is it time for me to step in, do you think? That's what I'm calling about. Is it time for me to step in? Well, I mean, you know, you, you can always tell a friend 
uh, what you think if you're seeing something like that. But there's a limit to how much you can do. I mean, you can't change his behavior. But you can tell him how you, you know, how you think he's being taken advantage of. In many cases, these guys kind of know they're being taken advantage of. Uh, uh, they're just hoping you won't notice. Damn. <laughs> so you can tell him what you think, but then you have to back away. Man, because I mean, I almost want to just call her and like get away from my friend. You know, that's probably not a good idea. No, right? no, no. Don't, you can't get that involved. You know, when somebody gets in the car with a bottle of Jack Daniels, puts their foot on the gas... All you can do is offer to take the keys from them. But uh, the minute they start tearing out, you got to back up and let them go. Okay, okay, cool. All right, well, I appreciate it, Tom. Can you take me out Kobe style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom Ernesto on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what up, Tom? Not much, Ernesto. Hey, uh, I have a question for you. Yes. Uh, you know, I'm 29 and uh, I only been in this country ten years. Well, I'm a U.S. citizen. Uh, I was in the Navy, but like uh, when I was back in the Navy, you know, three years ago, I used to be like the bigger player or whatever. But uh, now that I'm right here. Uh, I moved to LA. I used to live in New York. And uh, uh, my question is like, you always talking about, uh, you know, like you got gay and stuff. Like, yeah. I always, I, I do get laid, but the only reason why I get laid is because I always looking like for bitches. I don't even say that. Like, I, yes. I talk to five, I talk to five girls at the same time. But like, my point is like, how you develop the game? Because I do get girls, but like the girls I get, I'm not like. They're not the hardest one, you know, like, uh, I, I, I got my limits. Got your uh, limits. What do you do for a living, Ernesto? Uh, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really have a specific skill. Right now, I work with my cousin. I help, uh, I help him to paint cards uh, body shop, at a body shop. So. And do the girls ever ask you what you do for a living? Uh, yes. I mean, actually, when they see my ride, I, I drive a Hyundai. So, I mean, they, I mean, I go to bars. I've been listening to you for a year. I do everything that, that you say. All right. Do you tell women that you paint cars? Do I what? Do you tell women uh, what you do for a living? Sometimes I try to lie, I try to, lie to them. What, do you, what lie do you tell them? I kind of tell them, like, I'm like a property manager for a building or something. No, you got to tell them something believable. If you paint cars, you don't paint cars. You own the shop. In fact, you own several branches of the shop. Start naming cities where you got shops. You got one in Santa Ana. You got one in uh, uh, Mission Viejo. You got one in uh, uh, West L.A. Body shops, body and paint. You've been in this business a long time. You're the president of the company. Do you Get some business cards printed up. I did that before, and in the beginning, uh, I mean, they kind of show interest, but, you know, little by little, like, when the conversation gone... That's why you need to keep the conversation short. You, ju you, you can give them your card. Your card can have the logo of your fake business on it. I see. The phone number you put on the card is your cell phone number. Uh, I mean, can you give me another idea? Like, I mean, how? I, I mean, what else do you talk to women about? Like, I mean, that, that as, that uh, here's what I talk to women about: as little as possible. The Tom Likas Show.